you don't want it bad enough. I was so desperate for a change that everything that would land it on my lap, I would take it. What are you worth? What's your net worth? 100 million. But you're proof that everyone can make this happen. Everyone, because I'm I'm a normal guy, bro. I'm a guy from a small town who's grown up without a father. I just had my mom. I had zero inspiration, bro. Nothing. No millionaires in the place I grew up. People want everything now, bro. But what makes me different, I'm willing to sacrifice right now for who I want to be in the future. People want to be you. People want to be in Rolls Royce, Villa, mm -hmm. everything. People are waiting for GTA 6 <laughs> to come out, but look what the f*** I'm GTA doing. 6 in real life? They already started playing that <laughs> game. Come on, bro. <laughs> Would you say those will be your darkest times? Whatever will happen, I will never go back. Mm. Never. Even if I lose everything, I, I will never go back. My mom was so stressed. She was so f***ing worried about me and my little brother. What would happen in our future, you know? Yeah, I was waking up every morning 4 a.m. just to save the business. And all the money going down. I had supplies to pay. I couldn't pay him. I was like, what the f***? I just did a record month. First place, I have to save a business. Second place, I had to save myself because I was not myself no more, bro. I really seen what happens when life strips everything away from you. The most proud I am is how I overcame those issues. It was so f***ed at times that I was willing to trade all my liquid money, all my millions, just to get my health back mm. again. If you can vision it, you can achieve it. When people see me going crazy, see my life, so see the jets, see the cars, that's just material. I look at who the f I've become. I became the man. I pay a $600,000 Rolls Royce Cullinan cash. But I feel that I'm worth that. I'm worth a Cullinan. I'm worth two Lambos. I'm worth sitting in private jets. I'm worth mansions. The biggest thing that people miss is having the vision. If you can create that for yourself, then you'll be a dangerous man and there's no competition. The critical thing that really changed everything for me in my life is... What is going on, my people? Welcome back to the CEO Cast, the number one podcast for showcasing business and entrepreneurship. Now, today we have a very special, special guest today. Someone who's an entrepreneur, a multi-millionaire who's come straight from the trenches just like you and I. Owner of the brand Icon and someone who has absolutely no filter whatsoever. And here's a warning as well. If you don't like the reality of what your life is today, don't watch this podcast because Samuel's going to say exactly how it is. And if you don't like it, then skip off this podcast. But if you're prepared to change your life, the same way that Samuel did himself, then this is the podcast for you. Samuel, what is going on, my bro? You good? It was a good intro, man. <laughs> we tried and, it, bro. And you're right, man. If, if, if you are worried about getting your feelings hurt, click off right now. It's not that I, I'm on a purpose to hurt people, their feelings, but I'm on a purpose to just share what has worked for me. And um, yeah, I, 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 I'm just passionate about everything I do, right? And yeah, things are good right now here in... Uh, Marbella, just got back from one of the craziest weeks of my life in uh, Ibiza. Partied uh, a lot, but uh, <laughs> we had something to celebrate, right? Yeah. And that's what uh, made it different uh, because we are not one of those that just goes out partying and uh, meanwhile your mom is struggling or you are failing in life. So uh, no, just got back. I'm staying in this um, yeah crazy uh, mansion. I you just, see, bro, yeah. <laughs> you just, uh, well. I just showed you, right? So. No, uh, life is good. Things are uh, growing rapidly. People uh, are seeing my face right now, left, right and center. But uh, no, excited for this uh, podcast. What was it that you were celebrating? I'm celebrating uh, just a, a full year of, of, of success, to be honest. At the moment, I'm doing well over three million a month with my uh, businesses mm -hmm. uh, combined. Uh, some months even more than that. Um, yeah, it's going, it's going crazy um, every month make at, at minimum half a million in profit, but uh, most of the times it's uh, a million in profit or more. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly celebrating who I've become and how I've transformed everyone around me, um, my family included, my brother included, my team members included. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just a movie right now, bro. And uh, last year, um, yeah, we did 20 million in revenue, which was crazy because the year before that I was really, really struggling uh, financially. Also personally, I had health issues, and uh, yeah, this year has just been a uh, a roller coaster. Crazy. Yeah. So uh, yeah, of course, I had to step out and celebrate. Yeah, sweet as man. Look, I I'll be honest with you. When people see you online, you probably know this as well. People want to be you. People want to be in places like this in Marbella, but they want to be living life in Dubai, Rolls Royce, Villa, mm -hmm. everything. So tell me, what did it actually take for you to become a success? So yeah, if 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 we take it back, the first thing it always will take is you need to get inspired. And I got inspired at some point, you know. I uh, opened my, my fucking YouTube. I was desperate. I was 18 years old. I had nothing going for myself. I had 20 euros in my bank account. And I was just ashamed of myself, you know. And um, I don't know, as if 
God controlled the algorithm, a video popped up of a light skinned kid who was uh, 23 years old at the time. And uh, he had like the lifestyle, he had the cars, the watches. And I was like, I want that. And uh, from that moment, I, I went on a search, you know, and I think that's what also makes me different because many people, they get inspired or they see something, but it's what you do with it, right? So I went on a search and that search that led me to uh, finding e-commerce in the beginning. It was um, the print on the mount uh, model, mm -hmm. which is yeah straightforward. Like uh, when you get an order, they print a design on a t-shirt, it Send gets it shipped out. to the yeah. customer. But I um, yeah soon realized that that was not the best because then you have to make all these uh, designs and uh, pay like uh, a, a, a guy on Fiverr and it takes long. And then I stumbled across dropshipping and that's where a whole new world opened up for me. I got obsessed from the jump. I, I, I jumped in straight away. I um, didn't go research for moms and then finally get my balls together and then make the decision. That day itself opened a Shopify store mm. because yeah, I love something that though, determined there and then. Bro, determined because often um, when people come to me who are procrastinating or is this really working or is this for me? I'm like, bro, yeah, well, you you don't want it bad enough if you if you really uh, start putting all these limiting beliefs in front of you. Because I was so desperate for a change that everything that would land it on my lap, I would take it, bro. Yeah. Because I was just uh, in a in a in a bad place. I didn't feel uh, feel too good, and um, yeah, I, I I started straight away. I'm gonna ask you this question, right? Because I want people, and depends how you answer it as well. What is what are you worth? What's your net worth? If you can answer. The, re the reason, let me tell yeah, you the reason why I asked sure, this first, sure. yeah, is because I want people to know this as you're talking about your whole past and your upbringing and everything like that, where you've come from. Because yeah. it's not given to you. You come from the trenches, just like everyone who's watching this yeah, podcast yeah. right now. So it's, it's always, network is, is, is subjective because, um, yeah, most of the times they look at your uh, EBITDA, so what, what type of profit you make a year. Well, I make well over a million a month in profit, so that's 12 million a year. Sometimes they slap a 10x multiple on that, so mm -hmm. that would mean that I'm, I'm worth 100 million. But I'm not someone who goes out and, and, and scream that, so I, w I would take it maybe a bit on the lower end, and I would say 50 million. But you're proof that everyone can make this happen. Everyone, because I'm, I'm a normal guy, bro. I, I'm a guy from a small town with, uh, who's grown up without a father. I just had my mom. Um, I was the oldest of the house. I, I, I needed to yeah, just be an example. At least that's what I felt like, you know. And um, I, I'm not book smart at all, bro. Um, I think what makes me different is that I commit fully. If I see something I want, I will do everything. I will go on that path and everything along the way. I, I will keep going. Um, because to me, it, it would... I, I told this uh, on, on a story of, of mine yesterday, like you, you should almost feel as if you uh, the opposite is like dying, you know? Mm. And to me, I'd rather die than not make it. And um, if you have a man mindset like that, then I will place my bets on you. And most people, they're always in between. I never was in between. I'm, I'm all or nothing. I'm an extremist with everything I do. Everything I touch, everything I do, I want it the best. So same with... Uh, Let's say I was 16, I stumbled across going to the gym. Mm. I wanted to do it the best, you know, I was obsessed and I got in shape. When I start, later down the line stumbled across business, I already had those principles, I had the discipline, and I was going all in. And uh, that should be uh, the mindset, you know, because this opportunity is so big. Yeah. With, with the internet, you can do everything, bro, yeah. It's interesting, man. Going back to it, right, your upbringing, it was just yourself, your mother and your brother, right? Yeah, and, and uh, my stepfather as well. Okay, and your stepfather as well. Yeah. Now, as you say, you come from nothing. Now, what, what did nothing really mean? And what were you able to do in your childhood that other peers probably were able to do mm -hmm. amongst what you were versed to? Yeah, so I would say well, nothing is also how, how you determined. I, I, nothing is, if you say nothing, people in Africa have, have nothing, right? That are struggling to, to eat. I was middle class, I would say, mm -hmm. and um, with nothing, I mean, my, my parents never uh, just gave me uh, st like all the stuff I wanted. I had to 
either uh, work for it or maybe deserve it or maybe on, on my birthday. But um, yeah, nothing means I, I was, was working for, for two bucks an hour when I was uh, 14, 15 years old on a fucking farm. Um, everyone there, fucking racist and was yeah. uh, Netherlands. Yeah, Netherlands, top of Netherlands, yeah. and um, yeah, I grew grew up around the seaside, you know. So also um, a lot of my uh, friends in school they were fishermen, mm. and uh, yeah, what was crazy about that is that they went uh, on a boat uh, on the sea to catch fish. Uh, usually, it's a family type of business, right? And they came back with a lot of money, especially for their age, you mm. know. Uh, some some 16 year olds were making a uh, thousand or two thousand in a week, you know, and I was here uh, fucking first for two bucks an hour later for five bucks an hour. I was doing dishes and um, yeah, I, I was just lost in the beginning because I always felt I was different. Me together with my brother were one of the only ones like uh, more dark skin. I grew up in a in a, a town like full of white people, you know, okay. and um, I, di I didn't mind because I don't didn't know any different, right? Yeah. But of course I, uh, I I I knew what racism was. But you know I had I had two choices, and choice one was self pity and uh, oh I'm, uh, why why is it like this? I was never like that. I started thinking. I was like, okay, um, I need to adapt. How can I be be the man, or how can I be popular, or so. When I was, to stand up. yeah, yeah, and and that was very important. Also, right now, when I look back, um, it shaped me. You know, mm -hmm. same with me growing up without my uh, without my dad. Uh, it, yeah, it, it shaped me. Um, I grew up quick. Uh, also, when growing up, my um, yeah, my mom got sick often. So, uh, also. Yeah, uh, a couple uh, couple weeks back. Yeah, I saw or, you say this in yeah, the story though. Yeah, it? or a month back or so. Um, yeah, she also got sick. She has a bipolar disorder. And um, yeah, growing up with that as a kid, um, yeah, it was very hard. Because if you know anything about a bipolar disorder is they turn against the people they usually love most or they care about most, you know? Mm. So even me as a little kid, I got a lot of shit on me back then. My, my brother, my stepfather included. And um, yeah, went through some some crazy situations with that, you know. Um, often police got involved, and but um, you know, I I I love my mom because she she is also the one that never held me back. Um, she's a smart woman, but she knew I, or she saw that I wasn't the smartest in school. Mm. Of course, she tried to push me to get a degree, but soon as I found ecom, she gave me all the she gave me all the freedom to pursue it yeah. right and yeah I'm, I'm very thankful for that but yeah to get back to your question i always had f food to eat i'm not gonna be like oh it was hard or like that no bro but i grew up in i think uh people many people can uh, relate with this i grew up also around um like a lot of uh of these normal comforts you know that most people have like uh uh yeah just uh chill on the couch or with oh, okay. uh, yeah, you know, people saying, yeah. gaming and yeah. they, like the the biggest problem for me was i had zero inspiration bro nothing like no millionaires in the place i grew up mm -hmm. right no 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 people making actual money besides some of those fishermen right but i didn't want to do that that to me that would feel like i was selling my soul right small cities yeah, yeah. so yeah that's that no first bro. so what was your first taste of money then was it the ecom or did you do anything else to do get a little bit of money no, it was ecom. Straight ecom. You know, um, I started ecom when I was uh, just 18 years old. I was still in school. Mm. I really, I had 20 bucks on my account, uh, bank account. I, I never had a taste of money. Mm -hmm. Never. Uh, and yeah, I was still in school when I started my ecom journey. I remember this so f fucking clear. During lunch breaks, people were looking at me like, what are you doing on your phone all the time? What are you watching? I said, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start with drop shipping. But what people have to understand is back then, drop shipping is not what it is right now. Now everyone knows the, the word. Everyone knows the term. Back then, nobody knew even what, what, what it was, right? It was, yeah. So I really felt I had this, this, this energy, this sense in me, like I found like a, a golden ticket. That's how it felt, as if yeah. I found a golden ticket and I had to be the one that right now to, to unfold it and make it happen. So, 
yeah, it was also kind of that me against the world uh, uh, type of energy I mm -hmm. had. So, yeah, I wanted to prove everyone wrong because you can imagine, of course, you are there on your on your phone watching all the shit. Saying, yeah, I'm gonna make money with this. Everyone said it's it's not gonna work. Yeah, now you bro. have to make it work. <laughs> oh, bro, and um, I had to because you know many people when they uh, pursue something new or they start a business, they. Uh, try to do it in secret right yeah, yeah, in yeah. private yeah. because if it doesn't work they no one can hold them accountable for exactly yeah. and i did it the opposite way yeah. i wanted everyone to hold me accountable and i also i'm someone i i, I cannot hold things inside of me right mm. so i told my mom i told my brother i told everyone in my family that i was going to do this and um yeah it was not easy bro so the first moms uh were tough i got my first orders after a couple of weeks so that gave me the confirmation bro that was that was just okay this this works and uh, because that was even the question right does it work and um yeah it, it works so i was just grinding first moms were very tough uh, after four months or so i found my first like uh, small success which led me to uh being able to quit my uh, my side job then i was just stuck around maybe 10k a month in revenue or so yeah um which was it was okay i would make 2k or 3k a month in profit which for an 18 or 19 year old it's good. Is, is good. It's good money. But I wanted more, yeah. you know, and I was stuck at that level for about uh, four to five months. And um, then I, all of a sudden I got some, some advertisements of people selling fashion or drop shipping fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, as if a light bulb went off, because I didn't even knew that that was possible. I thought to run ads. Yeah, I thought um, no uh, drop shipping fashion. I thought like uh, that it had a lot of limitations with the returns and with the sizing. I thought that would not work. Yeah. But then I saw people do it. I was like, okay, let me try this out. And um, yeah, bro, it it it, it worked. I went, managed to do my first one k day, selling like uh, jackets with my drop shipping store. Everything got shipped straight from uh, China to the to the customer, of course, and yeah, that's where a lot of uh, changed, you know, because I was working on this; it was very good, uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, yeah, I, uh, a, a lawsuit uh, hit me, or I got a letter that like, like uh, I was apparently uh, it was a copyright or something going on. Mm -hmm. Then I had to uh, shut that store down and find something new. This was already after three to four weeks after I started uh, with uh, selling fashion. How much profit would you have made in that time then up until that point? Right, let's take a quick 30 second break from this podcast to tell you about today's sponsor. Now, if you're like me and constantly looking for ways to invest but still want to use your money on a daily basis, TrustXPay has you covered. TrustXPay is an offshore crypto card for high spenders so you can spend without having any limit. And it's simple, load on your USDT or up to 30 different cryptocurrencies and spend them with a Visa Platinum card. And with AI monitoring crypto prices, TrustXPay ensures that you get the best rates for your transactions. And here's what I'm doing my bit and covering you guys. By signing up through CEO Cost, you'll get a dedicated accounts manager to help you manage your sign up. So if you click the link in the description below or scan the QR code on the screen right now and use the code CEO Cost, you can get 10% off your joining fee and 50 USDT. Once again, use the link in the description, use code CEO Cost or scan the QR code on the screen right now so you can get 10% off your joining fee and 50 USDT. Now let's get straight back into this episode. I, I, I remember very uh, clearly because in, in that letter of the lawyers, it said they wanted uh, 10K for, as a fine. Oh, and I just had 10K on my bank account. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the money I had. <laughs> and uh, But you know, everything happens for a reason. I had to shut that down, started looking for new opportunities. And then I found uh, these pants. And you know what the crazy thing was? I was already buying these pants myself. And it was it was a, a, a trend. It was like these pants with a lot of stretch in them, and they weren't being sold in the Netherlands. And um, I was like, bro, I need to do this. Message the supplier. He said you can even drop ship it, and that's how it all started, bro. And pff, everything transformed from there. So in my first month, I managed to do seventy thousand uh, euros, which is about uh, eighty thousand dollars. First first month of selling that product. That's a fucking lot. Bro, it was a lot. And what people also have to understand, the margins were insane yeah. because there was just a lot of hype around it. I, bro, I, I, I went literally uh, in one jump from, uh, what is it? I made about, uh, before that, maybe four, 4K a month or so. Mm. Um, bro, I went in one jump to 30,000 in net profit. What do you think it was, the product itself or the way you done it differently? It, it, was, the, it was a combination of both. So... Other people were already selling the product, so it was not just directly the product. It didn't work in the same way for them. It was also the delivery, how I built the store, the way I marketed it. Because still to this day, bro, 
uh, e-com or selling online. It's, it's all marketing, yeah. you know, it's all perception. It's all the way you can position your product that makes it work. You, it reminds me a lot, right? Sitting here listening to your story right now reminds me a lot of, I've done a podcast with Lewis Morgan, the co-founder of Gymshark. Mm. And, you know, back in them days as well, no one knew what dropshipping was. Yet they were dropshipping these uh, drawstring vests, I believe it was, you know, and no one, had, no one had any clue what it was. And then they've obviously built the brand to where it is right now. And we've seen Gymshark yeah. go to, uh, you know, unicorn levels and it's mental, bro. It's mental. So yeah. what you just said there, was that the birth of Icon or was that? You that, was Icon. that was yeah, Icon. That was, that was the start of Icon, bro. Yeah. And um, yeah, Icon has, has, has changed my life, right? Icon is, is the reason that you see my, my, my lifestyle right now going so crazy. This year we will hit 30 million in fucking revenue. And it's that same fucking dropship store that I started on that first day, you know? Mm, yeah. What I started straight away. And um, yeah, right now, of course, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm living the life. Most of the time, I'm in in uh, Dubai right now. Um, yeah, got got everything under control. They just picked up a new uh, mansion, yep. which I'm very happy with. Uh, living on the palm, and um, yeah, it's just best thing anyone can ask for, isn't it? Yeah, man. I'm just grateful, you know. And I thank God every day because at the end of the day, uh, of course, I'm the one who executed. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed for sure, you know. Yeah. What's what's that feeling like like of you being able to achieve your dreams? Not just financially and living in villas and all that sort of stuff but being in a position where you know you can take care of your mum you can take care of your stepfather you can take care of your biological dad yeah you know being in that position it's, right now it's it's hard to put it with words often because the way i feel right now is is something i want everyone to be able to experience you know mm. just the the peace i have the clarity i have because right now i'm just at the point that i know that I will, whatever will happen, I will never go back, never. Mm -hmm. Even if I lose everything, I, I will never go back because I I have the knowledge, I have everything, I have the network, all, all of it under control to be able to get it back. But you now to to tell your mom that she doesn't have to worry no more. Bro, my, my mom was so stressed. She was sometimes even to the point that depressed at times because she was so fucking worried about me and my little brother of what, what would happen in our future, you know? And um, yeah, right now she's she's just at at peace. I'm very happy with that. My dad, I had him on the phone last night. <sighs> it's unbelievable. He's just the proudest man alive, bro. Where does your dad live? My dad lives in Nigeria. Okay, he lives in Nigeria. Yeah, mm. but he, he's telling all this fucking town about us, or or they even come to him because yeah. right now we are going viral everywhere, you yeah. know. And um, that's why often that's why. I can sometimes be so direct because people don't understand. People are, are, are too selfish. They think it's all about me, but it's not just about you. It's about your, your family, your brother, people maybe in your neighborhood. You have no clue what, you, what this, your success would do to people, even people you won't even know of, bro. When I purchased my first car, I was still living with my mom. I, I purchased a, um, a Mercedes AMG A45. Yeah. And um, I think I've seen that on your YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah bro. And it's. Also that, that was so crazy because I come from a, such a small town and all of a sudden it's this kid here, light skin with an, an A45 AMG, yeah. AMG living this? with his mom, yeah. fucking pimping. Like <laughs> how? And and you know what that did? Because I later down the line got like this message from an 18 year old kid. He said, you know, when you were driving through the neighborhood that inspired me to start with drop shipping. I didn't even knew this kid. And he said, right now I did my first 100,000 euros in a month. Yeah, damn. Bro, and, and that's what I mean. You will inspire people you, you don't even realize, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a blessing and everyone should, should chase that. And it doesn't matter in, in what way, you know. I don't want to uh, uh, tell or say people like uh, that you have to push it to a certain extent, but at least think bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these, these losers, they're all day behind their, their PlayStation, doing nothing and, uh, bro, I, I cannot stand What it. impact are you having on the world like that? Yeah, nothing. bro, and, and it's, you know, people are escaping reality. Mm. They're escaping reality. It's funny, I was sharing this on my story, like people are, are, are uh, playing GTA or waiting for GTA 6 <laughs> to come out, but look, what the fuck <laughs> I'm GTA doing? GTA 6 in real life? I, I already started <laughs> playing that game, come on, bro. And, and it's, I'm not special. That's what people really, really, really need to understand, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm just this, this normal guy from this small town with no education, no degree. But I just went all in. I went all in. That's Made the only top. differentiator. Top. You know, I was thinking about this as well the other day because I had a conversation with my mum. My mum started asking me things of updates in my life, you know, where I'm at financially or 
subscriber level, etc. That uh -huh. sort of stuff, right? And uh, we hadn't had that conversation in the past year. And I told her and her, her jaw dropped, yeah? Really? And that's when I deeped. I was like, yo, that feeling I have right now of my mum thinking that about me, that proudness. Because bear in mind, I was that kid. I done sh bad in uh, GCCs. I'm not sure if you have that Netherlands, uh, the equivalent of grades, yeah. etc. all yeah, that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. Done bad in that. Didn't go to university. Didn't do any of this. I was the, the black sheep in the family, yeah, I suppose. Bro. And you know, seeing my mum pride, uh, my, my mum proud of me, that feeling beat everything else all over the financials, all over any other the feeling I've ever, ever experienced. It was that thing right there. Bro, it's priceless. Yeah, it's, it's priceless. It's, I, I can't yeah, describe, because my mum, she goes out uh, and tell, uh, tell everyone what I'm doing, yeah, you know, because she it. cannot hold it inside. Yeah. And even when I was at the start of my journey, I was almost like, mom, don't, don't tell that I'm doing this because I was doing drop shipping. And if, if you know anything about drop shipping, you want nobody to know your stores and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to, you, you don't want really people knowing what you're making money with. And I'm like, mom, mom, don't tell them. They will check out what I'm doing with my store and they yeah. will copy me. But it's, it's all love, you know? Yeah, I see. Where was your brother Ruben in all of this time? Mm. Look, when I was 18, my, me and my brother, we had differentiated two and a half years. So he was still being being young, you know, being a teenager, just, uh, I don't know, ch chasing girls, being a, a problem here and there in the class. And um, yeah, look, for me, it was the same. But when I was 18, I grew up uh, real quick, right? Mm. So I started making money. I also um, really, from the get-go, I tried to get him involved. That's the first thing I did. But it didn't work out straight away you know why you you gotta really want sh stuff you know you not not half ass so we he built himself a store here and there with my guidance but i never wanted to do it completely for him you know mm. so i i told him what uh, what he should do with drop shipping but he got sales he made some revenue but you gotta be obsessed especially yeah. in the beginning because if you know anything about business the start is like you have to go in the trenches, bro. It's ugly. Mm. And if you're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to sacrifice maybe your current life or sacrifice going out with friends or chasing girls, then, yeah, then, then that's the price you are paying, right? So, um, no, in the beginning, it, it didn't really work out. Um, may, yeah, maybe I, like, later when I was, yeah, just I picked up my first AMG. The second move I made, I moved out of out of my uh, my hometown, mm -hmm. and that was one of the best decisions ever. You Is know, that when you went to Amsterdam. Yeah, I went to Amsterdam because uh, yeah, in my hometown, bro, there were only people with limiting beliefs, only people who had nothing really going on, and all of a sudden, I was this this big fish in a small pond, right? Mm. Everything was, everyone was looking at me like, "What the fuck have you done?" Right? And uh, to a certain extent, it's nice. It, it, it may be, uh, it's good for your ego, yeah. but I wanted more. So I moved away and uh, I was first there all by myself in Amsterdam. I, I got like a nice apartment. My, my first apartment, uh, I paid like a four, 4K uh, a month for. And my mom was stressing like, no, you're not gonna do that. And I said, yeah, yeah. Because I, I needed to go for something that at least pushed me. Yeah, right? puts pressure on you. I say this all the time, pressure makes diamonds. It's, it's, it's a fact, bro. Uh, I, I perform even better under mm. pressure. So yeah, it was good. It opened me up. I had no friends there. So <clears throat> you have to open up, right? Step outside your com comfort zone. And yeah, in a, in a little bit, I was like, okay, Ruben, uh, come, come over. Of course, we were already chilling because me and my brother, we it always done everything together. Yeah. But except from starting the business, I, I did that on my own because Ruben was at a different stage, right? And yeah, uh, at one point, because he was still in school, I remember, um, there came a moment that he also uh, was like, okay, um, I, uh, I'm almost done with school. And then he moved in with me fully in Amsterdam. And that was really the moment that he uh, really um, yeah, got involved with Ecom. He, he had to uh, start with uh, yeah, his own store yeah. uh, because... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I wanted him to do, achieve something himself. I didn't just want to uh, do it for him. And right now, when I look back, that's been very good. Um, but it, it only happened after, uh, yeah, after a, a mindset shift, you know? And uh, yeah, it was, it was in the beginning, it was, uh, it was complex because you have to understand my motivation in the beginning came from being broke, came from having like, 
nothing when it comes to my my lifestyle i had no money in the bank mm. i i wanted to uh, also also chase girls but they saw i was this broke guy i was good looking i was in shape i already had that but i was like i don't have to have the money right so my motivation was like okay i need to become the man across the board but uh yeah ruben already had uh, m many of that stuff right he already had to design the clothing design the shoes because i was able to uh Provide support him, him yeah. right and um, he was already going out uh, chasing these chicks uh, chicks in my home da 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 right um so his where did, where did his motivation come from right in the beginning it, it wasn't extremely there so um, yeah, some instance happened later down the line, um, which really transformed uh, his mindset and made him the man he is today. And that was when, uh, yeah, my business was really failing, you know. And um, yeah, I was waking up every morning 4 a.m. just to save the business. What year is this? 20, I think it was 22 even, yeah. Okay, so yeah. only like two years ago. Yeah, it's two years ago. Look, before that, he was here and there making some money with his own store, but not crazily. But this was really where everything transformed for him. And that was when yeah, I was waking up 4 a.m. in the morning, and all of a sudden he came home from a party, 4 a.m. And I was really going through it, right? I had, I had issues with my business financially. I had health issues. And I was the one up, and he was celebrating what, right? And I was like, no, no, no. And I... Yeah, I don't know. I held it in me until the next morning. And then I told him, like, I'm so disappointed in, uh, in, in you. And at first he didn't get it. But later he was like, yeah, OK. And I said, you, you got two choices right now. Cho choice number one is we go in, in this shit together and we're going to save this business. Choice number two is you go back to your mom. And I, he was like, what? And uh, bro, from that moment on, he was grinding. And the good thing is I got him involved with Icon mm -hmm. because at the time I wanted to exit the business, um, which was um, yeah, also a story of its own, right? Because- uh, I'm gonna ask you that in a moment. But yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a story of its own because it just cost so much time. But anyway, Ruben started working in our operations and um, yeah, really he became like a, a real entrepreneur, a real leader there, uh, was able to, to lead the team as well. And um, yeah, what, what I always tell people is, look, if you want to partner with, it's your brother, it's a business partner, um, it's someone else, it doesn't matter. There's, there's just one thing that you got to have, and that's that the vision is aligned. You got to both want, or you got to both go for the same outcome, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you want in the future? And together with that, have the same input. So it doesn't work if I go... 120 miles an hour and then my brother or my partner goes 60 mm. then you have conflict right yeah. and yeah as soon as that was aligned we were able to really uh yeah uh, get get shit running properly again and yeah not too far after that uh, yeah, everything uh blew up yeah so why did you want to exit icon was it because it becomes stressful and as you said there you know it wasn't going the greats of years in 20, 2022 did you want to exit yeah purely because of the stress and what it came with or so to be honest i wanted to exit because my life was just not how i i, I wanted it to be so i the, the year leading up to me trying to exit icon was a crazy year bro that was 2021 it was during covid i was in dubai i was doing about 300 to 400 thousand a month with icon but like high profits, like 30 to 40%. So every month I was making well over 100,000 uh, in net profit, right? But a complete new world opened up for me there, right? Mm. I, I was started living a life I never even knew existed, bro. Things I never even dreamed of. I was with, I all of a sudden I had a new friend group, all entrepreneurs, all same mindset, same vision, were able to really share, open up. I was going out craziest parties ever. I was at a crazy life. I was spending money. I, uh, bro, I, I was with girls I, I used to dream of, right? And uh, ten it, out, it ten was ones. just, yeah, bro, <laughs> just models people see on their fucking IG, right? Yeah, I was yeah, with yeah. them. Yeah. And yeah, bro, it, it was just crazy because I don't know, but for some reason, it was the same with my friends. It was like a crazy uh, econ boom, you know? All the people you saw there, were, uh, most of them were, were dropshippers. Mm. And um, yeah, what uh, happened is pff, we were just living the life, right? We weren't even focused too much on work because, uh, yeah, literally I wake up, I, I check how much money I made the day before. Oh, I did 10K in a day. Oh, how much profit is that? Uh, that is 
oh, that's 3K in profit, just on the top of my head. Okay, uh, let's go beach club, let's go restaurant, let's go club after. And oh, I was well, spending. Into the profits of the business. Bro, I was spending profits, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, that, that was what also laid it down the line, led to problems, you know, because um, yeah, success leads to comfort, comfort leads to failure. And I, uh, yeah, after uh, when the summer hit, all of a sudden my business came crashing down because there were some updates with the ads. You weren't able to track your, your ads like properly, right? Mm. So um, yeah, I had to look for answers, but it was still complicated. Then I found a solution and I started running uh, again. Then I had this feeling inside of me, okay, I need to go big again. I need to to do something to sh to shock the, the you know, the, my e-com uh, network or the guys online. And I set the goal to do one million in a month. And um, yeah, that was crazy, bro, uh, because I knew no one around me who has done that, also with a brand of mine with inventory at the time. And uh, yeah, I managed to do it. I did one million in a month. It was extremely stressful, but it was it was crazy. That was li literally like the first time ever I saw that you can achieve anything you can put your mind to, you know, mm. also the, the, the real big goals. Because I, I learned from a book from uh, Grant Cardone, the 10x rule, okay, like yeah. uh, set 10x goals with 10x input. Yeah. And that's what I did, you know, and uh, I made it happen. But uh, I was I was still this reckless motherfucker, you know. Really, so really I wasn't anything. even I wasn't even tracking my profits properly. I I remember being in the fucking club in Dubai, checking my phone. Um, I, I I made like uh, 150k. I did in a day, right? And then I was just spending. And then the m month afterwards, I went on a holiday just for Christmas and stuff, and uh, for New Year's. And then I found out like what the fuck is happening? I opened my bank account. All the money going down, all the money going down. I had supplies to pay. I couldn't pay him. I was like, what the fuck? I just did a record month, right? Well, I, I, I wasn't a businessman yet. I wasn't a CEO yet. I, I, my business had no real uh, like proper structure, didn't track profits or anything. How crazy is that even, right? You do a million in a month, you aren't tracking profits properly. Mm. It's, it's mind blowing if I look back at that time right now. So yeah, it, uh, I came back from that holiday in Am I came back to Amsterdam. I was like, I need to change this around. And at the same time, I had uh, health issues that started. And that was really hard because first place I have to save a business. Second place I had to save myself because I was not myself no more, bro. I was in pain, I had no energy. Often I was uh, days in, in, in bed, right? If you don't mind me asking, what was the health condition? It was uh, issues with uh, the nerve system. But okay. I didn't know that for two years, bro. I was desperate. I didn't know what was going on, right? And um, it was like a chronic fatigue, oh, chronic okay. fatigue syndrome. Yeah. And it was extremely hard, bro. And um, yeah, I came back and I was like, uh, maybe I need to sell the business. You know, that will give me time to breathe. I also wanted to pursue something else, uh, start a new brand because part Part of it was also, I didn't see the potential of Icon no more. Um, so I was like, it's the best to exit it. And that's where uh, where I started that uh, exit process. I feel like times like that are needed though, man, because you know, when you have that wake up call of, okay, cool, things aren't working. I've come dropped down to my knees. Now yeah. I need to figure shit out how I can make it progress. Times like that are needed because imagine you got to 10 million a month or something like that. Yeah. And there's still no structure in place. That fall is going to be so much harder than what you've Facts. experienced now. So I think it's, Stuff like that, are key, it's, man. It's it's all meant to be, you know. That's why I suggest everyone to stop self pitying about your problems. Because look, I I asked, I prayed to God to become the best entrepreneur I could be, to uh, live a crazy life, to help people around me, you know. And uh, yeah, what God did is okay. You want that, right? Mm. So, and. What happened? More obstacles came, you know? I had financial issues, I got health issues. And in the beginning, I, I didn't understand why, you know? And I was like, why, why, God? why is this happening to me? But it was all a gift because it was there on my path to make me better, you know? Like yeah. uh, God gave me health issues to make me stronger mentally, right? I'm, at the moment, I'm a machine, bro. Even with my lifestyle, even with making uh, millions a month, I'm up, bro. I'm I'm more, way more locked in than all these people who have, 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 are at the bare bottom, right? And yeah, it's the same with, with those financial issues, right? I, I went into this exit process because of that. And 
it learned me everything, right? Uh, it had us build Icon to a, a, a real business. I became a real CEO myself. Before that, I was not a CEO. I was just a, a, a dropshipper, a hustler who was making money and just living the life. Mm. I learned to be way more grateful, grateful for everything, the small things, just waking up feeling good. Well, I, I didn't feel good for, for two fucking years when I had the, that, those health issues, right? So I learned to respect any, uh, I learned to respect everything. And then when I overcame it, I was like, bro, I will never go back again. I will never take shit for granted ever again. And that's also a part of what people see right now in my lifestyle, right? They're like, how, bro? What the, how are things so crazy? Bro, an, another car, another this, and I, how, bro? It's, it's because I, I really see what, what, what happens when life strips everything away from you, right? And uh, yeah, I came back and um, yeah, I'm proud, of, I'm really proud on, on, like people can ask me, what, what are you most proud of? The most proud I am is uh, how I overcame those those issues because it was really tough, yeah. I want to know how you did because you say it as if it was just, you know, overnight process, but I'm sure, would, th would you say those would be your darkest times in business? Uh, pff, by far, bro, <laughs> I've had, I went to, to hell and back, bro. I, I really, it's, days got very dark. Well, that's uh, what I'm saying, you know, in your darkest times, that's where you learn a lot. How yeah, did you was, actually come back from that? It your mindset really, shift it was really painful bro it gave me even goosebumps uh, that bro just looking back at that right and yeah so first thing what is really crazy and that's what people have to understand and that's also why bro your 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 mindset and your mentality is stronger than than anything i fixed my financial issues before i fixed my health issues so i Bro, I, I was in pain. I had no energy. I had nothing uh, in my body that felt right. I was desperate. But still, I got back. Uh, Icon, we overcame those uh, financial issues. Boom, all of a sudden, we are doing one million a month again. And that was, um, that was the end of 2022. We started uh, doing one million a month again. Since that moment on, we have never missed a million in a month ever again, right? Only doubled up, doubled up, doubled up. And um, yeah, that, that led to last year doing uh, 20 million in a year, right? Mm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm ex ex extremely, extremely proud of that. And those health issues weren't even fixed by that time. So, pff, well, let, let, look, let, if, we, if we look at the business itself, before we jump to the health uh, problems, I had to take shit more seriously. I had to put structure in place. I had to build a proper team. I had to look at what really worked for the brand and what worked for us was good marketing with products with very good images, um, just products that people would look at on the website and think that's what I want, that's what I want it to uh, fit for me as well, like especially I'm talking fashion, fit is very important especially when people are shopping online because they don't have a different reference, right? In the store people can feel it, the material, they can try it on. Mm. Selling online people don't have it's it. So you, yeah. your, your pictures and the way you market it is everything. So once we understood that, yeah, everything started catching up again and um, yeah, it, it became a real business, bro. We are hiring like A-level people and yeah, that, that's, that's what really changed and the health issues, uh, Bro, I only overcame it maybe eight months ago. But if you look at my lifestyle eight months ago, I was already going crazy, bro. Uh, yeah, I was already uh, making lots. Uh, I did already millions a, a month back then. So, yeah, it was, it was very hard as well because it will be... But people who, who are maybe struggling with the health, they will understand, look, it got, it was so f shit at times that I was willing to trade all my liquid money, all my millions, just to get my health back mm. again. And yeah, bro, it's, uh, it, was, it was that painful, you know, at times. And um, yeah, it, 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 it had to be there. And um, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's hard for me to talk about. No, fair as well. Let, yeah. Let's come to the now, right? Because I feel like now people look at yourself, Samuel, and they're like, the guy is doing bits, you know, big Marbella mansion, private jets where you go everywhere, all the time. Villa, the cars, the girls, the lifestyle, the clothes, everything's all on point. And people must be looking at your stories like, yo, what's Samuel's habits to success? What does he do on a daily yeah. basis? So I've got in here one of my questions, which is what are your 
go to daily fundamentals that you've got to do to make sure that you sustain success. Yeah, that's a very good one. Yeah, so of course people they see me live life now on 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 a crazy level, right? They 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 see the Lambos got uh, two Lambos right now. I got in uh, Dubai, got a Rolls Royce Cullinan. Got a mansion there. The mansion cost uh, what is it? Seventy five thousand a month, bro. And I have a yearly contract on that thing. Yeah. So I'm I'm spending, but uh, but yeah, people see the outcome, but. The goal is not the outcome, the goal is to keep doing the thing that gets the outcome. And that's one of the lessons I learned throughout that, the, the, those hard times, right? So every day I, I wake up early, every day I set a, a set to-do list, like a short, brief to-do list, like three to five things max. Mm -hmm. Every day I hit the gym, every day I pray, every day I, I read a little bit. And most importantly, and this is this is above everything, every day I chase to become a little bit better, you know, because um, people need to stop overcomplicating the shit out of this, this life and success, bro. Just take one step every day, one step every day, 0.1% every day, and it adds up because... <sighs> People see right now, my, as you made it, your life is perfect, but I was not perfect. I, I told you how much struggles I had. Mm -hmm. I was not perfect every day, but I also really learned throughout, for example, those health issues that I didn't have energy. I learned by also by reading the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller, how to do at least as possible with as much outcome as possible, right? Because most people, they are running around like a chicken without a head all fucking day, working on 50 tasks. No, bro, I pick and choose. I pick and choose what has the most impact. And um, yeah, that's also why my to-do list is, is very short, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. And you're always on fly flying on private jets. Can you tell me about the first time you flew on private jet? Uh, like how, how my first time flying yeah, private jet? first was? time on private. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> that was crazy. So, okay, I, I'm in I'm in Dubai. I have a uh, crazy weekend lined up uh, in in Barcelona. I take a first class flight to Barcelona together with with my best friends, my brother. Um, we had an event there. We partied, and um, it was honestly I think still till this day maybe the craziest party ever. You can see it even on my YouTube series Onua Uncensored. I filmed everything, <laughs> just like raw in the field. And uh, the day afterwards, I wake up, little little hangover, but still feeling good because, yeah, bro, I, I was living life, right? Always feel good. And uh, I open my phone and I see one of my friends, he said, let's take a jet to Ibiza. And I'm like, oh, bro, bro, I don't, I've never flew in a jet. But then after an hour or so, I'm sitting at breakfast and we were all like, fuck it, let's do it. And me and also those friends, we had never flown private, right? And um, yeah, we step on this jet. We were drinking, we, we, we were still in this, this crazy mood because we, we just had one of the craziest party ever. I'm with, with girls on this jet, we're going crazy, uh, land in fucking Ibiza. Uh, we had a, had a house there and then we went yeah, just clubbing, bro. But Shit, the boy. jet experience was sick because, you know, it's different. The plane waits on you, right? So you're not in a hurry, you don't have this stress, you don't have to check in, bro. You don't have to check in because you already right. have your passport. Yeah. The security check is like nothing, bro. They, it's just you walk through, you shake hands with the pilots and you're on the jet. And you, yeah, just, just this feeling, bro, of being on a jet that, that like you're, the pilot is flying for you, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 different. But since that since that moment, I don't know what happened, but something just snapped, and I've I've been flying jet after jet after jet. That right now it's 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 crazy to say, but it gets standard. Well, there, there, there's this thing that I saw. Yeah, Steve Harvey said, I don't know if you've seen this clip or not, where he goes, uh, you know, next time you go on a flight, pay for that little bit extra so you can go in business class. Yeah. And what he does is unlock some sort of thing in your mindset. Wow. And in this case, being <laughs> private jet. Who wants to go back to first class, let alone economy yeah, and all that sort of stuff? What, what, what is, this is so good because people have to understand that I flew to Dubai in economy, you know? I flew economy and... Really? I thought you were doing at least business or first or something to get that experience. No, no, no. I flew economy. The, maybe even the first four or five times that I went to Dubai. Then that, that we leveled up. We went business class. Then it became first class. And right now uh, flying jets, bro. And exactly what you said because what i always tell people is raise the bar for yourself once you're there make that your new standard and not accept anything below that shit right so 
It's the same with, for example, when you fly business class for your first time. Tell yourself, I'm not going back to a economy. Yeah, I'm worth more, going, yeah, I'm, I'm worth more. I, I will do everything to, to make that happen. It's the same with, with your business. If you make 1,000 uh, revenue in a day for the first time, tell yourself, I'm, I'm not doing anything less. This is, I deserve this, this, this stuff, right? So when, when people see me going crazy, see my lives, I see the jets, see the cars, to me, <laughs> that's just material. I look at who the fuck I've become because that's really what I'm proud of. Because I'm not one of these losers that had, had one lucky shot and made some money and then is all of a sudden in this Ferrari, but you're still a nobody, right? Mm. You're still this, this skinny, uh, insecure dude. No, bro, I became the man. So everything I do, yes, I, I, I pay a $600,000 Rolls Royce Cullen in cash, literally cash, like bricks of cash in Dubai, right? Crazy. But I feel that I'm worth that. I'm worth a Cullen. I'm worth two Lambos. I'm worth sitting in private jets. I'm worth mansions. And that's all because I know what the fuck I've put in. I know what I had to overcome to be the man sitting here in this chair today, bro. It was crazy. Bro, I get goosebumps every time. Even uh, earlier today, right? I was making a story. I said, guys, I'm going on this podcast today. And it's to me, it's not just a podcast. During those dark days, I was visualizing myself sitting at the podcast, talking freely, like f completely like overcoming or, or having overcome all those shitty ass obstacles and then they're being the man right and that's right now and that's why i i i can sit here like speak freely because i i really feel i've i've uh, i've done that you know i'm proud on 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 the man i've created i'm proud that um i brought my brother along i'm proud on him as well on what he's done it's uh, yeah, man. It's uh, life is so much more than what people think. Like on surface level, God has really blessed us with uh, what, what's possible. But God will give you chances, but He won't do it for you. You know, mm, yeah. like uh, faith, prayer doesn't work unless yeah. you work. We have this saying in Islam, uh, "Tie your camel," meaning God's written what's for you, but you still gotta go out and do the work. Facts. You know, there's loads Facts. of people in the world right now who want to do this you know, lifestyle of Lambo and yeah. all that, but they're just sitting on their asses right now. They're probably watching this podcast. I'm gonna do nothing after it, bro. People are, are watching this podcast with with a big ass belly, eating fucking uh, uh, potato chips all day, doing doing nothing, but bro, people are f fake often, you know, yeah. because they look at my life. Oh, I want the Lambo. If I well, if I had the Lambo, then I really would be the man. Or mm. they, they they want the crazy lifestyle, but they don't want to put in the work. Yeah. So what does that mean? They wish for us. Uh, they wish for a lifestyle. They wish to have results that they're not worthy of. And to me, that's fake. You're mm. fake because yeah. you wish to be some, because you wish to be someone you're not. Right? And yeah, I I I I can't stand that because. To me, all the value is in who I've become, not on, on what I have, bro. Yeah, these are just byproducts yeah. of what you've become. For example, I, I, I picked up this um, this uh, Richard Mille 1103, right? $250,000 watch. But I could have picked it up already months or even a, a year year ago or so, but I didn't do it. Why? Because I didn't feel that I was worth it yet. Mm. Same with the Cullinan. I didn't feel I was worth it yet. So. One of the things I learned early on in my journey is delayed gratification. Working for something for a longer period of time without instantly treating yourself, yeah. right? Uh, without the, all these instant pleasures. And um, yeah, I picked it up later when I was worth it or when I felt that I was worth it, right? And what is the exact problem nowadays in society? It's instant pleasures. People like junkies on their phone, on TikTok, like consuming, Scrolling, ordering get, food. Yeah. Oh, 10 minutes here. Da, da, da. People want everything now, bro. People want everything now. But what makes me different, I'm willing to sacrifice right now for who I want to be in the future. I'm willing to sacrifice my current reality for the lifestyle I want to live forever, right? And if you, if you can create that for yourself, then you'll be dangerous. Then you'll be a dangerous man and there's no competition because <laughs> that's funny to me. If I, I don't know if people have their eyes open, but all I see is, is like weak, comfortable losers there is no competition. Same with this e-com game. Same with there is no competition because you're competing with guys who are chilling all day, who are behind their PlayStation all day and they want it and they, they, they try it for fucking 30 minutes and then it gets hard and it doesn't come easy and They'll they start whining. And then it stops. Oh, yeah. bro, that, that's, that's the thing, bro. And 
Yeah, there is no competition. That's what we say. You know, you say on your story all the time, pussies. Pussies, bro. <laughs> bro. How, how is it possible that I'm sitting here at 25 years old and then there are guys in their 40s playing video games, you know? And then they, they tell me, no, Samuel, he's just, he's materialistic. He's yeah. materialistic. Bro, I'm materialistic. You, you are going to a shitty ass nine to five every day to do what to you hate that job deep deeply but to do what to make some little money so who's materialistic because you know what the thing is i'm i'm i was not i just told you i was always i was here for who i uh, had to become right those people are only in here for the results yeah they're only in here for the material results i'm in here for who i become so who's materialistic mm, right them straight them it's funny because you know people don't see that from the outside perspective People don't see that from the outside perspective where they see a guy with a mansion and Lambos, whatever the case may be, yeah. but they don't understand what the man had to do to get that stuff. Right. You know, they just see it as if he won the lottery. Oh, there's my man with a Lambo. There's my man with a mansion. You know what he's done to get that yeah, is, is different. And that's why I love having people on you, like you on the podcast, just say exactly how it is. And the thing is, this is another reason why I love having you on the podcast. Well, there's no sugarcoat. You tell yeah, people, bro. call people out of their bullshit there and then. Yeah, well, we live in such a soft world today where we need people like you to bro, just tell people exactly how it is. It's so good what you just mentioned because, you know, a love ain't lies. Love is being honest with people. Mm. And um, I always wanted people around me who, who, who were honest, you know. And um, I really feel that that is, uh, is missing nowadays, right? So, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's what I want to understand, right? Because you're living at a point in your life right now where you're going on private jets you're getting the cars getting the mansions right um now they always say to there's that saying of don't stay in the comfort zone how do you get out of the comfort zone now you know when's the last time what was the most recent time in your life where you thought you know what i'm fucking uncomfortable right now i need to do shit to get out of these trenches um look so the <laughs> you know what the thing is with my life right now, it's so easy to get comfortable because I, I have everything. I can uh, be anywhere, I can spend whatever. I don't look at prices, I do what I want. I can be with anyone I want. I can be with the girls I want. Bro, if you, you check in my fucking phone with the type of girls that mess, like bro, uh, I know 99% of all men, they would jump on those things, right? But. I understand that success leads to comfort, comfort leads to failure, right? Because mm. I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, I, for sure. I told you that time during COVID, I was winning, but I didn't have my priorities straight. So the, 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 the critical thing that really changed and that changed everything for me in my life is I lost it all, right? And I was here, I was sick, I was saving my business. And because everything was stripped away, you learn to value what you really want. And before I got all my pleasure, like all my pleasure from going out, chasing girls, um, buying designer stuff, um, having a crazy lifestyle, like material stuff, right? I got all my pleasure from that. Right now, I get all my pleasure from growth. So being the man, every day becoming better, keeping uh, track of my habits, you know, pushing myself. And because that is where my pleasure comes from, that's how I'm able to elevate to crazy heights, you mm -hmm. know, because most people, they, um, they catch a little momentum. They are doing good with their business. Oh, let's celebrate. Like, yeah. after, bro, they, they're doing good for two weeks and they think they need to celebrate. And what happens then? You lose all momentum. And within business, momentum is insanely important. It's everything. Because once you catch momentum, you start to see things differently because... Once, when you are really on it and when you keep, keep, keep going, you're grinding and you start to see opportunities that other people don't see because they just went out. They just uh, are recovering from their fucking hangover yeah. and they missed that fucking winning product. But I saw it, you know, so momentum is very important. And um, yeah, that's that's what I, I look. People see me go crazy right now, but I, I've really put in a lot of effort uh, over the past uh, past years. Yeah. Do you know, what I think the biggest thing is what you're saying there as well the biggest thing that people, a lot of people miss is having the vision. Yeah. You know, if you've got the vision of yourself, let's just say having your own private jet one day or owning these properties in every single Bro. location, you know, your name on the deed, then that's a different level of vision. Where if you've got people with vision in such small, minuscule levels, that's where the big difference is. If you can vision it, you can achieve it. And you have to understand that it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. It's going to happen in, in, in years to come, which I think you've got a spot on, you know, 
of no Bro, winners going to come in the future. What, what you just said is, it's it's so right because. You know, there was only one thing that really kept me going during those dark times. And what was that? That was my vision, bro. Mm. My vision of, of how my life would be in the future. My vision of, of who I would be. My vision of, uh, yeah, how the business w w would be running, right? Are there anyone else could have quit. Yeah, bro. So that's step, step one for everyone is to create a vision for yourself. Create a fucking vision board. Who do you want to be? Where do you want to live? What do you want to have? And... Yeah, who are you proud of, right? Mm. Like, I think one of the, maybe the superpowers I always have, have, have had is I'm able to reflect. I'm able to look in the mirror and see, okay, Samuel, you're, I, was, I, was, I was ashamed and insecure of myself before I found Ecom, right? And I was honest. And I was like, yes, that needs to change, right? I was honest with myself when I was skinny that I needed to go to the gym. And still to this day, I know all my fucking weak spots. I know where I want to grow. And that's the same with my fucking business. I know where we need to get better. And what do most people do? They push away their weaknesses as if they are not there and they only focus on their strengths, Yeah. right? But start focusing on your weaknesses, become well-rounded because that's why often right now when I step out or when I come somewhere or when I hit a restaurant, I walk inside, people are like, whoa, who has who is entered? Because the energy is different. You see that, the whole aura. The aura shifts. And yeah. that's because I've become, because I've became well-rounded. I've not just, I'm not just that guy who just has money, right? And comes walk in. No, I have money, I have confidence. I, I have the physique to, 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 to match the fucking lifestyle. I'm not this, this, this skinny dude sitting in this Rolls Royce. No, bro, I've, I've worked on myself and that, that, that ties perfectly in what, what we was just talking about. Right? This shit is a video game. Mm. It's as if you're playing GTA. With, what character do you want? What, what, how do you want to look? What, what, what car? What options? What options do you want yourself? Do you want, yeah. do you want the confidence? Because I think every fucking man is choosing fucking confidence to be in good shape. Bro, why are you not doing it right now? Yeah. Because, you know, we all have this, uh, this inner voice, you know, and... Some people even call it God that is talking to him. But we all have this inner voice that, that says, Samuel, you need to be better here. That's whispering to you. Oh, you need to change your life. Yeah. You know, oh, you need you're, to do you're something about shit. this. Yeah. And are you listening to that voice? Like that, that inner voice that wants you to grow? Or are you listening to that other voice? That, Say, e no, do it later. that evil yeah. voice, bro. That voice of the devil. Oh, it's so, bro. The, uh, Napoleon Hill. He hit, it, he hit it out of the park with uh, outwitting the devil because, mm -hmm. pff, bro, it's so true. You have this, you have, you have two voices, right? One of you, the voices tells you, no, it's okay. It's, it, it's okay that you only make 3K a month. Mm -hmm. all, all your friends, they make the same. It's, it, it's okay that you're not, not in shape because uh, look at Jimmy, he's fat, right? But it's not okay, bro. Mm. It's not. Listen to that other voice that wants you to level up, that wants you to become this well-rounded motherfucker. And I can tell you with all my heart, there's nothing that feels better, bro. <laughs> nothing. When you step outside and you, you know that you're, you're the man and you're proud of your, what you've created, I want everyone to go for that. And that's also, that ties into what you just said, right? When I share that online, some people, they, they can look at that and they're like, oh, uh, why, why is he saying that? Or uh, you cannot say it like that. But pe most people, they are too short-sighted, right? Just like you said, they just see the Lambo, they just see the lifestyle. But with me, bro, just like we are talking, we are having this conversation, go a step deeper because I'm not this guy who just had a Lambo who, or who got rich of a course. I'm, I'm, I'm not that. I've really uh, done it for myself, you know. And, yeah, people need to read between the lines, especially when, uh, when it's someone who's, who's really done it. You know? The thing is, as well, with yourself in particular, you can see all this. On, it's documented on YouTube yeah. from the very get-go, you know. You can see the whole come-up. You can see the whole lifestyle change. You can see what it took for yourself to get to the positions you're in. And there's one thing I want to know here, right? Going along them stages, there's different milestones that you've hit, you know, whether mm -hmm. it be a thousand dollars a month, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million. Yeah. What has been some of the unexpected challenges that you've had to face throughout them times? Because I'm sure it would have been a whole different mindset on mindset unlock after you've hit each goal. You know, you've learned something new. You've, yeah. you've just, you've, your whole mindset's opened up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, about like uh, what were some of like the, the real mistakes yeah. or things that yeah, really, yeah, um, basically, yeah. 
Um, so many, bro. It's crazy. Uh, f first, first major mistake: uh, not looking for help. Like thinking you can do it all yourself. Having these limiting beliefs. All all uh, people who uh, uh, have mentorship or have a course that are all scammers. Bro, uh, I had so much limiting beliefs that that had me the first four months of my journey make basically zero. Yeah. I know that nine out of ten people would have quit if they were in my shoes because nothing was working, right? Well, um, then once I invested in myself, that changed everything, right? What, what's, what's crazy to me is that um, when I found those jeans with Icon, I was able to look at myself Okay, Samuel, you don't know jack shit about fucking Facebook ads. Please buy a course. I pay this guy 500 bucks, like a, a Facebook expert or something. And what happened? I jumped from fucking uh, 8K or 10K a month all the way to 70,000 in a month. Which guy did you pay? pay? Do you remember? I don't remember. Bro, it was a long time ago. He, he quit with, uh, with like... Uh, His he, business is different. Yeah, he went on a different path. He started like... Uh, like a fitness or something. But you learn a lot in that. Yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. It, but you, you have to uh, reinvest in yourself because that's what people don't see, you know? Uh, I've paid guys for, for, for coaching 50K, just cash. Uh, or here, oh, uh, I pay 20. Because um, once you really start to understand the principles of, of growing and how you become better, you don't want to make the mistakes yourself. It's mm. like the who not how principle. Yeah. You can ease, either think, how can I do this? Or you can think, who can do this? Or who can help me with this? So I invest everywhere. Look, when I see an opportunity or when I want to, uh, for example, let's say you have your, uh, you're, you're doing all right with your business, you're scaling on Facebook ads and you want to do uh, Google ads. You can either choose to study Google Ads yourself or you can just go to the top guy and pay him for it. Mm. And that's what I started doing. It's kind of like this, I don't know, like uh, the word for it, but I just started attacking left, right and center. Okay, uh, see an opportunity there, do it. Who can do it? Who's the best? Pay, 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 invest, invest, invest. And then there comes a moment that you're really unstoppable, bro. Because if I see an opportunity in my business, okay, uh, let's hire the right person for that. Okay. Uh, Let's start with that tomorrow. There is no fucking opportunity. There is no ID that, that we have with our business that doesn't get executed on. Everything will get executed on. And then you're, bro, you, you become really dangerous. And that's yeah. why, uh, for example, with our, our business uh, icon, we are really attacking right now these, these big fashion corporations because there aren't too many like... Um, mid mid range fashion brands so you have a lot of smaller fashion brands that are like between the like the the 1 million to like uh, 6 million a year or tops 10 million a year hmm. but we are now going to like the 30 or in the future 50 right and um, the other the other brands are like these huge corporations that do uh, nine figures plus 10 yeah. figures right but we are really challenging that that's partly due to the fact that Every chance we see, we jump up on, uh, on it, you know? What is your dream and ambition for Icon? Where do you want to take it? it, it, it it's a, a hard question because uh, I recently changed my mind on this, you know? Um, first, I told you I want to exit it. Then I was like, okay, no, let's, let's keep it going because we started to do good again. Then recently, I was like, maybe we need to still exit it. And yeah, I, I, I changed my mind again, you know? Because to me, there... What, what is the number one thing why people exit? It's the money. Bro, it's the money, right? Mm -hmm. You get a paycheck, couple million cash on your bank. Okay. For many people, that would completely transform their life. To me, I can do an exit of, of multiple millions right now, but my lifestyle would stay the same. So you start really looking different at an exit. And instead of me gaining something, I look more at me losing something. I lose my first ever business. I lose icon, the, the, what changed my life. And it's as if I'm selling a piece of my soul, right? So, yeah, I just started looking at it. And, and look, icon is now five years, almost six years. And I know, because I, 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 I'm honest, you cannot build the same type of level business within a couple months. It's gonna take time. The beginning, the beginning of your journey is, uh, is you have to be in the trenches uh, or when you start a new brand, right? Mm. And I don't want to go in the trenches right now. I don't want to uh, completely lock myself away. I want to, 
I, I, I like, I really like how my life is, you know. Um, my life is, is, is really good. I have people work for me that I respect. Uh, the brand is growing. Uh, I can do what I want. I'm not involved in the operations with Icon no more. Um, I'm, I'm focused on, uh, on different businesses. For example, we have uh, my, my coaching company. Bro, we are crushing it. Like the, the client results we get, you cannot compare it with any, any in the space. And why is that? It's because we are really doing this, right? I'm one of the very few that is helping people to build their fucking uh, uh, e-com store or dropshipping store who is doing it himself in the game. Bro, I have all the tactics, I have all the solutions. Bro, I have, I have a brand that does over 20 million a year and I can, I straight, I give all the secrets. Yeah. I have people in my, my, my team, coaches in my team that I've built from the ground up. Some of them are doing more than a million a month with their dropshipping store. They give all the secrets, bro. They give sometimes even, even the products. Like, oh, I did, uh, I did a million with this product, go test it. And then we have a 19-year-old kid that makes 200K in profit with that same fucking product, mm. right? We, what we do is unmatched. And honestly, um, and I, I can say this with full fucking conviction because I, I know there is no one challenging me on this shit. There is there's nobody in the space that can, can make people from fucking zero successful like I do. Like we do with my fucking team. It's, I, I've helped people from every background like uh, creating millionaires yeah 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 people who had really nothing like uh, nothing in their bank account people uh, who want your position people. yeah people in my position but also like people who are stuck in a nine to five mm. also people who already had money but they didn't have freedom you know because they were just working nine to five for a job they made maybe some of them made maybe 10k in salary a month but they say Samuel my life is not how I want it to be, bro. I'm working mm. six days a week. I don't want this. It's not how I want to live. And we help them and they, all of a sudden they start to make 50,000 in profit a month, yeah. 100,000 in profit a month. What's, e bro, you know, my, my first ever coaching client, and this is, this is mind blowing to me, but it had to be like that. It was like a light skinned kid who, who uh, uh, also came from the same type of background as me. Bro, he, he came to me, he was, he was doing all right with Ecom, like 2K a day or something. But I managed to scale him to at one point 70k in a day. He was able to do, and he, he got himself a penthouse in uh, in the Netherlands. Yeah, he's absolutely done right, would, yeah. <laughs> 19 years old, right? Barling, and we have countless of success stories, bro. I've, you know, they say, they really say that the ultimate level you can grow to, as a, uh, for example, in my case, we're now speaking about like um, as a mentor, mm -hmm. is that someone like outshines the teacher and i have have skilled someone from um he was doing a 10k a day which are, are is pretty good but i skilled him at one point to uh, he managed to do half a million in a day which is insane on like a launch but he uh, started doing six million a month bro six million a month so crazy mental. guy from sweden but that, those are crazy examples what i want people to understand is uh majority of the guys i help or the girls i help many girls too uh, they start from the bare bottom, from zero. They don't know what Shopify is. They don't know what uh, drop shipping even uh, entails, right? They, and um, yeah, we have the systems. We have a, a like a blueprint. People can just copy and paste, you know, because that's what many people need. They need mm. someone to hold their hand. And uh, throughout this, they will become an entrepreneur because um, just like how I'm speaking with you right now or how you see me um, being direct with people online, it's the same in my uh, my coaching. For some people, don't like it in the beginning, but, but that's, that's what you need, bro. That's how it's got to be. You got to yeah, have bro. someone who's gonna keep you accountable. Keep you accountable and say exactly how it is. You know, like yeah. I said, we live in a world where it's full of sugar coating mm -hmm. and people being too soft. Don't do this. Don't do that. If you just have someone like yourself on board, who's just fucking do the work, yeah. do this, do that, do what I'm telling you to do. Where will they get you? And then eventually, they might hate you in the beginning, but once they see the results, they're gonna be like, you know what, Samuel. Thank you very much for pushing me through that. Yeah. Because without that, I wouldn't have got it. They will, they will look back and think like, bro, it was all needed. I needed that, you mm. know? That's also some people, I, especially in the beginning, right? I was do, people have so many like limiting beliefs, critics, especially online, bro, it's crazy. People, all these keyboard warriors, right? So um, I, I was doing good with my store and I started posting results. And later down the line, I started helping people. Why do you help people if you have money yourself? Why would you do that? That's how people look at it, right? But, bro, think fucking bigger. I'm making money myself, but 
I, I want to transform people the same way I transform myself. Bro, this, why are people so selfish, you know? Because many people, they are like, okay, once I get money, uh, make money and disappear. People, will no, they will not see me nowhere. I yeah. will just go to an island and chill. Why not help everyone I, come up? Are you really that selfish? At least help your brother, at least help someone in your family, right? Mm. And yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I just want to be an inspiration and a walking example and make, make, a, make a change. And I know I'm doing that right now, you know? My goal at one point was to become like the, the name within Ecom, like the household name, like, within the e-com space and right now it, it has happened it became reality it was literally on my vision board mm. literally one thing i want to understand right the difference in money that you make whether you make a million a month or a million a year a million a year can still get someone a mansion like this or mm -hmm. get the lambos and get the lifestyle they could do a private jet here and there possibly yeah so what's the actual difference between having a million a month and a million a year what's the lifestyle differences that you're able to achieve <laughs> look uh a million a month or a million a year uh, and uh, in this instance i want to talk profits because it's uh, it's better but that's uh, what is it like uh, 80 80 90k a month it's nice you can uh, go crazy but bro there are there are different levels right look uh, this this mansion that i'm staying in right now cost uh, 80,000 for 3 weeks yeah, you know 80,000 yeah. for 3 weeks that's not taking into consideration uh, the security bro um I told you before this, like I had some instances here in Marbella that we, we, we got robbed, you know, it was crazy. But um, I pay at the moment 1200 bucks a day just for security, just for security, bro. It's not even taking the bodyguards into account when I go out. There are, look, within money, there are different levels. Look, I can fly, uh, fly first class, I can fly on jets, but there are also different type of jets. There are like crazy fucking golf streams. There are yeah. different levels. And G750 look, is a whole lot. Yeah, yeah and it's not uh, like that you you need to go for that, but bro, uh, it's it's different. Like you can like you can look at it, you can play for like a, uh, a, 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 a Wolverhampton or you can play for a Manchester City or a Real Madrid. It's mm. different, bro. Yeah, and the lifestyle different. is different. And I can honestly say right now that uh, I'm, I'm playing as if it's the Champions League because um, so where, where did that dog came from? Sky! <laughs> dog on camera, dog on the pod. <laughs> dog on the pod. <laughs> okay guys, hey. Okay guys, we closed the door for Sky but she found a fucking way. This dog is different bro. <laughs> this, is, this is by far one of the richest French Bulldogs you'll ever see or ever meet. You're like Lewis Hamilton, travel with a dog everywhere. Bro, this dog has never flew in economy, not business, not first, only private. <laughs> but, um, Is that why it's named Sky? Sky, yeah, yeah. Straight all in the sky all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, wanna, I was going to say this as well. You have been absolutely popping on social media recently with YouTube and Instagram and everything. I can imagine your followers going up like crazy all the time. And everyone knows that you're balling, yeah? So on that topic there of you saying what happened in Marbella the other day or last time you were here. Yeah. Do you not think it's dangerous, you know, you showcasing all this yeah. wealthy lifestyle, but then your face is so out there, you meet people, you don't know who's in it for good intention and who's plotting against you. Don't yeah. you think that's crazy in that sense there? So, uh, yeah, uh, two things. First of all, yes, it's, uh, of course it's dangerous, but everything has a price. And, you know, if I would have to sacrifice being able to inspire people uh, just to keep myself safe, I'd rather sacrifice safety, you know, because... Um, it means everything to me. The, you, people don't understand the, the, the messages I get or how I've really uh, completely changed people their life. It means everything to me, you know. And yeah, it's of course uh, showcasing how I live, showcasing everything I do, of course helps by, with uh, yeah, uh, waking people up, like opening people their eyes. But it's crazy, bro. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've not shared this anywhere. But uh, the last time we were in Marbella, we got robbed, you know, and... Um, how, how did that all happen? Yeah, so uh, cra we had, we had a, 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 a mansion. It was a very good looking one. It just got newly delivered, you know, we're the first ones staying there. But it, uh, it didn't have the best security, so it didn't have uh, pr proper alarms and stuff. But I, I, I asked the concierge, I said, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want to stay there. She said, it's no problem. It's a gated community and um, you will have 24-7 security because I, I was like, I, ne I need security. So um, 
what happened is, bro, I was I was sleeping middle of the night, but I'm someone I don't sleep too too deep, you know. Mm, Last sleep um, well. Yeah, and what happened is I lay in my bed, and all of a sudden the the door of my room goes open and uh, light comes inside, and next to that I see a face, and I see that face just straight like eye contact looking looking at me was you staying alone or was it your brother as well no 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 my brother was there also my videographer was there so first instinct did you think it was someone who's staying with you first instinct i was bro i was half asleep i was like i was really dr because a friend of mine was also staying there before but he left i was like was that him because i couldn't see the face properly but after a couple seconds i thought something is off so i stepped out of my bed and I want to walk downstairs and I hear my dog barking. And then I knew something is wrong. I walk downstairs, I uh, look at uh, the kitchen table and I see s stuff that was in my um, uh, crocodile uh, Dior bag that was all of a sudden on that table. I was like, oh, what the fuck? Then I go downstairs, another floor, where all the rest of the, the sleeping, uh, where the bedrooms are. And very strange, I see my bag like next to the wall next to that i see the back of my videographer next like on next to the wall there then i look at the the doors of the rooms all doors are like on a uh, small like uh, opening small mm -hmm. uh, small gap and i'm like nobody sleeps with their door open so i go inside of uh, the bedroom of my brother i put on the light i said ruben 100 percent someone has been inside the house so Okay, go upstairs. I go outside, look for my security guard. Security guard gone. So I think, what the fuck? This is an inside job, maybe. So we called the other security guard who was uh, off duty. He said, no, 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 he has to be there. Something is wrong. So <laughs> I think maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes later, I hear my brother screaming like, fuck. And then I was like, what? He said, yeah, fuck. Watch gone, uh, Rolex day date gone, uh, Cartier diamond bracelets gone, all from his um, in his uh, bathroom, you know. So what happened is uh, someone went in downstairs, then he uh, went into all the rooms downstairs. Uh, everyone was sleeping. He first uh, went into the room of my videographer, grabbed the bag that was like literally next to him, mm -hmm. like grabbed it, uh, opened it, took everything uh, out of it, took all the cash, then went to Ruben. Uh, Ruben was sleeping. He opened the door of Ruben's uh, bathroom and then he grabbed his, uh, his Rolex, his jewelry. And bro, he already had jackpot. So which thief that already has jackpot? You have, you have a day date for 50k watch or something. You have cash, you have a diamond bracelet. Which fucking thief then goes up two floors more to, to f find more? Well. That's that's a thief who know. That's a thief who, experience who, who knows what he's doing. Yeah. Mm. Who first off knows what he's doing. Second off, he knew what the fuck he was coming for. Yeah. And he was coming for my platinum watch. Mm. So he all, went all the way upstairs to my room, but um, yeah, he ran away because he saw that I woke up, right? And then uh, the dog also started barking because this guy was running, and also my security guard. That's why he was gone. Ran ran after this guy to so catch him. So was it just one guy? It was one guy. And he saw him and he uh, almost catched him. He was in the mountains, but he, he, he got away. So, um, yeah, that's the risk, bro. And um, pff, yeah, that was fucking crazy. Bro. How did you even find out where you were staying? Yeah, you ask me, I don't fucking know, bro. So sh honestly, if you want to do harm, if you want to do bad, then uh, you, you find a way, right? Yeah. So I was posting the how my villa looked on my IG, maybe, uh, Maybe someone forwarded the address. You don't know, mm. um, but yeah, yes. that's that's what happened. Marbella, like people, if you heard the rumors, it's true. Uh, you you, I know so many people here that that that, that got robbed. It's crazy, but um, yeah, I see it as a blessing. You know, you know why? Because I could have been robbed at fucking gunpoint. I could have been held hostage, and uh, it's just material. My 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 dog is alive. My brother is all good. Um, it's just uh, it's fucking day date. He already has a new one. Bro, fuck it. And and it was a lesson. Uh, the the lesson was really in um, take this shit seriously. Like mm. don't take this light this lightly. Samuel, you are balling. You everyone sees you go viral. You're still showing your lifestyle. 
you're a fucking target, okay? People will come for you, okay? Understand that, okay, okay, I understand. Double down on security. That's why I'm paying over 1,000 a day right now in, in, in security, right? So Can't be done. That's, that's, that's what, 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 done, what happens, yeah. Well, look, there's going to be a younger Samuel watching this podcast right now. What would you say to him? You know, who wants to start his fashion brand? Who wants to be the guy getting the private jets, women, yeah. cars, luxuries, everything? What would you say to him? But he's not I, there yet. I, I would tell the younger Samuel that everything has a price. Your dream life has a price too. And the price often is uh, sacrifice and... Uh, just fuck these, 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 these parties right now, you know? Fuck these chilling with your so-called friends. You really th think it are friends? You're just escaping reality with them. Fuck that. Create a vision for yourself. Go all in and commit with your fucking life because pff, nobody can stop you if you are... Well, a, a man who is committed to his goals and who is willing to sacrifice like his current reality for it, he's unstoppable, unstoppable. And that's what I needed to, uh, to hear in the beginning, you know? I would tell him that this opportunity is so much bigger. Ecom can be so. I, I started Ecom as a, as a hustle, bro. Mm. I started Ecom to not have to work for the, a, a shitty bus or not to work on a farm or not to do dishes. That's why I started Ecom. I had no clue of what, what this would become. Working I had well. no clue of what I would become. And then now to look back, bro, it's, it's crazy. I, sometimes I. Uh, I, I just need to just stand still and just look back because things move so quick. But I would want that kid or any uh, kid right now that is watching, this is so much bigger, so much. Don't, don't look at it. It's just, it's just a drop shipping. It's not just a drop shipping store. People think it's uh, a little trick. No, bro. That same drop shipping store that I started that led me to build a brand. And that brand, I got offered during that exit process eight figures eight figures for that same shitty ass drop shipping store right what people would call it so this is so much bigger bro this is exactly what uh yeah will change your life on on a crazy scale just like mine but you need to be committed and you need to uh be willing to uh sacrifice for it you know because this is not just gonna fall out of the sky because you have to understand i could have been i could have been happy at 300k a month with in revenue, right? It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, bro. And I was, I was, I was balling. I was doing 80 to 100K in net profit a month. It's a lot of money, bro. And you can do everything. But I always just needed to raise the bar for myself. And that's what needed if you want to go to the crazy levels. But um, <laughs> even, even just making it happen for yourself and setting your family good and just maybe um, removing yourself from your, the, the neighborhood that you don't like just just commit 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 your teens commit your early 20s to live the dream life forever because that's literally how it is i started a few years ago bro a few years ago and everything changed yeah well sammy i want to thank you very much for coming on the podcast to wrap it up what do you want to leave for the audience who are watching this what i want to leave everyone with is uh, go chase your potential this life is a fucking blessing i thank god every day and um yeah, go, go for everything that people think is not for you, you know. I'm here sitting in this chair because I proved every doubt they're wrong, every naysayer wrong, and it means, it means everything to me, you know. So, um, yeah, that's it, and uh, I will keep going. Check out my, my YouTube for sure because uh, I'm taking over, bro. Hey, content hey, on wa that. Just watch me, bro. Yeah. Every video I get right now is, uh, or I do right now gets over 100K views. Um, which is crazy, but maybe in the future that will be uh, very fucking different. So, um, no, to me, it's, it's, it's all love. I want to uh, yeah, say thanks to everyone, uh, also my, my family, my followers, because um, yeah, pe people, they, we were just talking about this, can be short-sighted, mm. but the ones right now listening or watching this podcast, I think they know that I'm, I'm very different, you know. The and, ones who um, made it to the end right now, yeah. actually tuned in and locked in, yeah. know that you're different. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. I'm going to leave everything in the description below, all your links and everything like that, bro. But until then, I just want to say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for coming on the podcast and hosting me in Marbella. But secondly, I think it's very, very inspiring to have someone like yourself on the podcast who's come from the trenches, made it out, living a fantastic, amazing life that everyone aspires to dream of having. 
and you're here right now to share it on CEO Cast, which I can't thank more than enough, bro. I appreciate it, you know uh, I mean? a lot, bro. That's uh, the sort of guys I appreciate we need on the it pod. so much. I uh, dreamed of like uh, when I was going through to be on like podcast of of this magnitude, and right now uh, it's it's here. So uh, thank you as well. Dreams bro. come true, bro. <laughs> Dreams come true here, <laughs> guys. It. Make sure you check out Samuel. All the links will be in the description below. Make sure you subscribe if you're brand new around here and share this to a friend because they need this more than you do. Until then, catch you lot on the next episode of CEO Cast. Peace.